Welcome to the journal episode 3, I'm Captain Hera. On this episode we're going to be discussing the most common deck archetypes being played right now and how to build them efficiently. The main classification of deck combinations being used at the moment are aggro, mid-range, control and tempo. That doesn't mean that all the decks being created right now fit in one of these categories. A lot of them that are being used right now could be hybrids or splashes of one another. But for the sake of clarity, we're going to stick to the ones we already mentioned. Aggro. The speed demon with a simple objective in mind to kill its opponents as quickly as possible. Relies on using low cost creatures and spells to dish out as much damage as possible. Now this archetype tends to go about early to be able to deal frequent damage. But a common misconception that some players have about aggro decks is that they are basic or that it doesn't require a high level of skill to play. Now this assumption comes because it can be a lesser interactive archetype. The strategy behind it is going to be quite simple. You drop the creatures, use a spell to remove creatures, open the lanes and try to deal as much face damage as possible. If there is no creature on the lane, you use the spells to hit face. So it, it can be seen, you know, as kind of easy. However, aggro decks need a clear understanding of timing, gem curve, and a proactive mentality to be able to stay on top of the game. Even though that you are generating more creators frequently, they tend to be weaker and remain weaker, while the opponent creators are curving out into bigger threats. So understanding the damage target is going to be a key element to survive. When it comes to aggro decks, the curve will stay frequently closer to the ground. Burn spells like Ignition, Ice Spike, and Sea Fire. Removals like Crimson Pack, Vicious Cycle, and Gigantomachia. They're used as bridges to progress the damage outcome to your opponent. To clear the lanes, get the minions or the creatures to be able to deal face damage. While considering the cards that you're going to be adding to your aggro decks, we want to have a couple of questions in mind. How good is the card at attacking the opponent? How good is it at killing creatures? How can I use my card to inflict the most amount of damage possible? We are going to be looking for cards that excel at combat situations in order to streamline our damage efficiency. Mechanics such as Rush, Deadly, Alpha Strike, Agile, Overrun are useful to maintain aggression on the board. Power Boost, Buffer Enchants, and Combat Tricks are other sources of stats increments that will benefit your creatures during combat. A good way to evaluate the cards that you're going to be adding to the deck is asking yourself, are the cards proactive or reactive? A proactive card is able to stand alone and function by itself without the need of additional help to generate damage. For example, the Iron Belly Weaver is a card that will put your opponent closer to the death. On the other side, a reactive card like Gigantomachia works as a response to a threat, working as a reset button that will clear the board but it won't get the enemy closer to death. Therefore, you do have to consider when you're setting up the deck, which kind of cards are going to help me to eliminate the opponent as quick as possible. You actually want cards from both sides of the spectrum. You want the majority to be reactive cards, given that it's the base of the archetype, but you also do want a couple of reactive cards in case that you're falling behind and you need to push a button to reset everything and start again with your aggression. Now, even though that we are playing an aggressive deck with the intention to finish the match as quick as possible, there are going to be moments where you want to be prudent with the quantity or the way that you're going to be attacking the enemy. You want to look for opportunities where you can deal the highest amount of damage. Sometimes that means that you're not going to attack in certain turns to be able to build up and then deal a greater amount of damage. In certain situations, you would hold a card like Magmator, for example, because you already know that the opponent has something in the board that can be eliminated with the Magmator, or you can bait him to play an additional creature in the surrounding lanes and then take care of both of them, clearing you a bigger path where you can deal a higher amount of damage. Aggro decks are easy to pick up, especially for a new player. The setup for a lot of the aggro decks, it is not as expensive as some other setup, but mastering an aggro deck is going to take you a significant amount of time to the point that you can become a complete menace to the opponent because you're going to be dealing constant barrage of damage that he cannot be able to stop. He drops a creature, that creature is eliminated, it opens a lane, you continue to hit and hit and hit. So it is actually quite a fun archetype to be playing and I would definitely recommend newer, newer players to maybe start with aggro to teach you a lot about damage calculations, 
board placement and then you can move on to the other archetypes that are also going to add additional layers of complexity to the game control my personal favorite archetype and the bane of many players control aims to foil the plans of the opponent by playing a reactive playstyle that wants to outclass the enemy in each turn control decks tend to lean on a higher quantity of spells and enchantments utilizing interactive spells such as rewind heads detain and deported sweepers like misanthropia they are able to retain control of the board then he closes by playing heavy creatures that the enemy cannot respond to and secure the victory now given the reactive nature of control decks they tend to lean into longer matches given that our goal is to reach the end game and then overwhelm the opponent with creatures that he cannot deal with we want to be looking for cards that keep the game going in our favor bounces like deported enforcer let astray removals such as seal of exile stall mechanics sweepers bombs draw mechanics are pretty much the core foundation of a control deck here in Midgard. You're looking to establish board dominance to the point that he cannot create a strategy. You're going to be taking care of his creatures, his enchantments, his artifacts. If he drops a big creature, you try to get rid of it as quickly as possible. You are going to be utilizing stall mechanics like bounces and blights to make the creature out of the game or weaker if he plays if he's trying to play something from the graveyard you might be able to banish it completely get it removed like for example in reanimator decks can suppress the creatures to eliminate the special interaction that a creature will have let's say a freaky huntress you can suppress it and get rid of it and the effect of the transformation and the auto strike is not going to happen when it's suppressed our goal during the early stages of the game as a control player is to make the life of the opponent as difficult as we can make it neutralizing his advances and building your walls while also getting ready for the deployment of bomb additional effects such as return to the owner's hand like born again warded and suppressed can also bring additional levels of complexity to your decks one thing that we have to keep in mind as a control player is to be prudent with the way that we generate responses as we want to neutralize the bigger threats of the enemy in the mid to late game for example you have a seal in your hand and the opponent has a volok of heavy that has been causing trouble should you seal the heavy to get rid of it the answer always depends on the specific scenario but we as control players have to also anticipate the possible bigger threats that the player can drop where using the seal might be a better option or the only way to deal with be one gem away from an Iku torso or a short stack and while the heavy could be a threat to our life pool a simple bounce or a stun might be enough to stall the opponent while we deploy our sap for example always take your time and analyze the current and future turns before utilizing our big spells one thing that i have actually noticed here in midgore is that control doesn't play on a traditional sense as it plays in other card games so in here you're actually going to be using a higher amount of creatures from what i've seen sometime from 20 to 25 creatures might be necessary for you to create the ideal balance between the spells and creatures on the difficulty scale this might be the second type of archetype that you would play as a new player you would start with aggro then move on to control whenever you want to try it it's going to provide you with a new set of challenges that are going to be really really fun and rewarding once you get the hang of it but you do gotta keep in mind that it's gonna be complicated the first couple of sessions that you have with a control deck Midrange is a fun archetype that mixes the fast pace of aggro with the reactive nature of control, having the possibility to adapt itself against the opponent list. Midrange decks are able to respond against aggro by controlling and against control by being aggressive. One of the things that we have to keep in mind is that midrange cannot fully commit to an archetype, so they sit right in the middle as a jack of all trades. With a progressive gem curve, midrange decks play to an incremental advantage that doesn't rely on card synergy but rather how well a card can affect the game we are looking for high value cards as we seek to overwhelm the opponent with a combination of both attack and defense our combinations here are more flexible as we are tapping into two worlds so our evaluation relies on value we seek to be proactive during the early turns and then overwhelm past turn four damage clamps combat oriented mechanics spot removals and aoe removals power increments from enchantments spells and artifact utility are all fair game when we're playing with a mid-range deck as you can see mid-range is very open to theory crafting given the progressive nature of the curve but as i stated before it can fall short against full aggro decks or full control decks 
as it can't go head to head replacing the archetype. You will see that mid-range is the most common archetype in Midgard right now. Given how flexible it is, especially people that are just getting into a new collection, they're trying to build decks, so you can pretty much take a little bit of aggro, a little bit of control, and try to make something work. And most of the time, they actually do work really, really well here. If you keep an eye on the ladder, on the rank ladder, you will notice that mid-drill and champion players, they do tend to play a lot of mid-range decks because, again, they offer attack and defense simultaneously. Tempo. To conclude, we have Tempo, one of the hardest archetypes to play but a very rewarding one as it utilizes adequate timing to control the board and respond to the progression of the game. It can play the role of aggro and control as well by using low-cost creatures and protect them throughout the game, thus making them a threat. Tempo decks sit in between of aggro and control. During the early phases of the game, Tempo decks will cast threats and will try to keep them alive by using spells and buffing them to continue generating damage to the opponent. During the mid game, a tempo deck can move to a control strategy in order to create a protective wall for our creatures. Regen, damage clamps, heals, armor, ray synergies, blight, warded are some of the tools that we can use to keep our creatures alive. So combining the control side, the bounces, removals, and the cheap threats, it allows us to remain in full control of the pace of the match while also slowly delivering bigger and bigger threats that now might not be possible for the enemy to remove move with a tempo deck timing is super important so reactive spells such as bounces and stall mechanics are the bread and butter of this archetype we are trying to play with the ability of the opponent to gain board control by controlling its mana consumption and mana efficiency now what kind of creatures are we actually looking for we're looking for cheap creatures that we can deploy as early as possible to continue generating damage against the enemy spells to pin down the opponent and cheap enchantments that can also power boost our creatures our main goal is to gain time while gaining board presence and then rolling out damage that can be blocked most of the time trying to set up a lethal. This archetype is actually really complex to use efficiently because again timing is the key. Temple decks are kind of interesting just because they're sitting right in the middle of uh, an allegedly opposing spectrum when it comes to archetype. Aggro and control are completely different but with the adequate card selection we're going to be able to create a tempo deck that it can become an incredible powerhouse. This is one of the hardest archetypes to play but the moment that you get the hang of it you're going to really really enjoy it. It is one of the most rewarding archetypes to play. At the end of the day, archetypes serve as a base to establish a strategy. But in your quest for improvement, I will recommend you to try several variations of all the archetypes I already mentioned. There are also hybrid archetypes that do tend to mix a couple of these ones together. I will recommend you to play different colors, different creatures, spells, and enchantments until you find the one that you really, really enjoy. Do not feel forced to play only one type of archetype just because it's meta just because it's winning a lot of games because the win rate is incredible right now just experiment test out crazy combos and synergies played under appreciated cards you're gonna learn a lot by doing all these experiments all these combinations that the moment that you actually start playing the standard archetypes you're gonna feel much better creating decks those experiments are gonna help your progression as a player and your creativity deck building I hope you enjoyed this episode, it was a little bit different from the previous two episodes but I do believe that we have to cover as many topics that it can help you to grow as a player and archetypes are one of them. I would also love to know your favorite archetype and why is it and if you have some insight to the ones that we were discussing today. I would love to hear it in the comments down below or stop by the stream. I stream almost every day during the night so swing by. Let's have a chat about deck building, theory crafting. Or if you are a new player and would like some information about the game, absolutely I would love to help you. I have written articles, I have all the previous videos, so I'm always open to help new players. With that in mind, have a wonderful day and I'll see you in the next episode. Goodbye.